Greetings, unsettled souls. Indeed. That's not my usual theme song. No, it's not. It is the Carolers. As uh, you guys saw here, I'm going to go through. If you're on, uh, if you subscribed on the Media Speaks, like I told you to do, you're going to see the slideshow here. If you're on Facebook, I will definitely make sure that I put the uh, images on Facebook as well. Um, I was honored with uh, being one of the people chosen to cover a Christmas Carol in Canton, Ohio. Now, get this. Um, understand a couple things I want to say. It's 175 years old this year. Yeah. This is, what, this is some of the things the man wrote. There are dark shadows on the earth, but it lights are but its lights are stronger in the contrast. I mean, just an amazing, amazing individual was Charles Dickens. Which, of course, you know, it's the the, uh, the saying it's going to scare the Dickens out of you. That's where that comes from, of course. And I did some reflecting on it. First of all, I want to go to the performance before I talk about, I guess, what it meant. Um, the performance itself had to have been as close to flawless as anybody could hope to see. The Don John, John Jones is the gentleman who plays Scrooge, and he's done so for nine years in a row. Absolutely astounding performance from him. There he is if you're on a screen share. The music of it was fresh. It wasn't the music that was in, and I noticed this last year as well, it's not the musical that most people think of with, um, with the, the version of Scrooge where he ends up going to hell and he's freezing. He's the only person in hell freezing. Um, this one was separate from that one. This is uh, different music. It's the one that's got the, uh, the more modern terms, uh, music in it including a song called It uh, Beats the Dickens Out of Me, oddly enough. I think what stood out the most is the fact that there are a number of people who have done this every year. This, this is the performance that they give each and every year. And they have grown into the characters, whereas you see people sometimes in plays who are phenomenal at their role. And then, you know, you wonder what it would have been like if they would have had even longer. For instance, um, imagine with the job that Val Kilmore did in the Doors movie. Imagine if he was touring and actually enveloping that character of Jim Morrison even more. I mean, that is the kind of comparison I can use to how good Don Jones did here. And I think that's important to note. He's in Netflix specials. He's in all kinds of things. He's like a celebrity around here. And you couldn't ask for a uh, a better transformation. Uh, my father used to say that during the transformation when George C. Scott played Scrooge, that his exuberance wasn't quite what Alistair Sims was, who was uh, arguably my dad and I's favorite Scrooge. Um, you couldn't ask for a better job than Don Jones does. He is excellent at injecting a little bit of comedy into it, but I've seen Scrooges where that has almost been overdone and you lose the general creepiness that was in the original book. That does not happen in Canton. Um, the Grim Reaper, as it were, the Ghost of Christmas Future, actually comes up out of the floor as like in this, uh, 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 what looks like a burial shroud. Uh, Scrooge and the Ghost of Christmas past literally fly over the stage they have real snow that falls on the crowd during the performance and uh again the i think what separates it to a huge degree in canton ohio is the fact that these people have grown into the characters they've done it every year and it shows it absolutely shows um they did an excellent job also with the uh, sets. The sets were moved quickly, and it wasn't in the way of the performance. So way to go there. And then in closing it, I want to say two things. First of all, I've heard this notion that Scrooge is a call to socialism because of the call to take care of the less fortunate. 
And I paid particularly close attention to the dialogue, and I did go back to the original book. I, I do read, believe it or not. Um, I have read the original novel, and there are, and I'm going to write more on this for Wits News and possibly Blasting News, so do me a favor and make sure you're keeping an eye out on this line for the next day or so, because I'm covering this for the Media Speaks here in the Correct Views, obviously, but I'm doing a write-up on uh, at least one other outlet, Wits News, so uh, make sure you're watching this comment line for when those go up. But... I will say this, I, I, I didn't get it as a call to socialism for a number of things. The workhouses in the state prisons that Scrooge had wanted to send the poor to were state run. He's being chastised for not giving freely of himself, not to the state. He actually mentions that he pays uh, money for the institutions uh, of the workhouses in the prisons. So that seems to be a call to the exact opposite to me. Second of all, when the Ghost of Christmas Present shows the two children, and they did an excellent job with that, by the way, at the Players Guild. They were crawling on the, on the ground, but they did a really good job of not crawling like children, but crawling like zombies in some movie. The director really took time to make sure that they almost slithered to the stage. It was absolutely uh, stuck to the... Uh, general creepiness of that scene that I think Dickens had originally wanted. Now I'm pretending to be able to think for Dickens. There you go. Um, but that was very, that, that was really genuinely creepy. But he says that the boy is want, or the, the boy is ignorance and the girl is want. And that they were Scrooge's children and they now cling to him being Christmas. They now cling to Christmas because there was no hope given from him. The onus was not on the state to come and rescue everyone, like some great nanny superwoman, but rather it was the job of Scrooge to give when he had been given so much. Like, I'm not a real big fan of uh, Rowling from the uh, Harry Potter series. I liked the first... My wife was way into them. I, 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 I liked the first ones, and then it sort of got dumb. Uh, what was done to Star Wars should be a sin. However, she's one of the most charitable, kind, nice people who have ever lived with her money. I think Scrooge was being called to be like that, to be very charitable and kind, not to give more money to the government, which is going to waste it by the time it trickles down. Lastly, it stood out to me that when Jacob Marley visits Scrooge, Scrooge says, you were always a good businessman. And Marley replies, business, humanity was my business. Not the state's business, not the government's business. So I'm going to write about this and go into more detail. I'm going to actually, when I log off here, I'm going to write those um, before the night is over. And I want to say that the Players Guild is running the Full Monty, uh, Newsies, Ada, the, the Witch in the Wardrobe, Next to Normal, Jesus Christ Superstar, and Titanic this year. And when you donate to them, and no, I'm not making any money. I just want to put this out there because it's really nice. Not only do they send journalists there and people uh, like me there who they treat very kindly, but they also send veterans and uh, um, at-risk children and groups like that into the performances for free and sometimes get them into a little bit of culture, and uh, nothing else brings a little bit of joy to their life. So please do support the Canton Players Guild, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow with the next day of your 12 days of Christmas. Do not forget that you can donate to me, too, at the correct views at hotmail.com. It does cost money to go to these shows, to uh, to go to plays, even though, even when you're not, they're nice enough to let me in. You still have to get there. I have to get back. Posting time, research time, all of that. Please donate if you can. Good night, guys. God bless. And faithful friends here at Media Speaks.